Welcome back again to Factions and Starting Positions. Victus here, joining in to another installment on this effort to create a proper Total War database. I bring you Pot Up Total War, a Polish mod that brings to light the obscure end of the 17th century, the transition period in between Pike and Short and the line infantry formations. How many times have you seen a depiction of this period on a game or even on a movie? It's a very, very place in history that has been completely neglected by everyone. But here, this Polish guy, as I mentioned before, has made it. Potop Total War. So let's begin and let's go straight into single player and the grand campaign. Look at how many factions do we got with this amazing and beautiful mod. I was about to say map, but th the map as well is very beautiful. I really love this transitional period because this is the moment in which everything is going to be on place for the modern world to become a reality okay let's begin with the first faction the kingdom of spain i'm just going to tell you we have 27 factions perhaps if i remember a mod that has so many factions as this one i mean a mod that i have showcased on my channel is perhaps the 30 years war that i have a lot of videos about it if you want to go and check them you can feel free to do it if you are new welcome to victus and if you are part of the family let's go and start with spain so what do we have here the first thing that we can see is that we have the long campaign here over here which is holding 70 provinces including of course, Madrid, Castile, Extremadura, Leon, Asturias, Aragon, the Basque country, everything is part of Spain. And then eliminate the faction of Portugal and the Sultanate of Morocco. Now, what do we have in terms of short campaigns? Well, the rules are simple, hold 40 provinces including the community of Madrid, Castile, Extremadura, and this time to assert the dominion over Iberia by taking the kingdom of Portugal again. I mean again, because in history, at this point, Portugal would declare independence from Spain, but this is going to change if we want to create an alternate history. We have the beautiful flag of Spain, that I always talk about a, a Burgundy cross that is the actual flag of King Philip of Habsburg. Let's go ahead and see the map. So now, let's be honest. Spain in the early modern period is a very badass country. So perhaps if we play Spain in this time period, we can regain the glory that has been lost up to this point. Because this is the very point in which this country is going to start to go down. And that is history. So let's go and let's begin with the first thing that we see, Madrid. We see Madrid, which is the actual starting position, the actual capital. So what do we got here? The ruler is King Felipe IV of Habsburg. The greatest general is Francisco de Melo. We got 16 controlled provinces in which 14 of those are cities and two of them are castles. The year in which we begin everything in this mod is the year 1648, the very year in which everything ends in the previous mod that I was talking on the channel, which is 1648 mod, and as well, the very whole situation of the Thirty Years' War. 
now let's go ahead and let's visit the characters here so we have over here king felipe the third he was dead in 1621 and now we have here king felipe the fourth age 43 which is the faction leader let's remember that every time that i do this we're going to have a look at the actual leader and the actual greatest general in this case the greatest general is called Francisco Melo and it's not located here. Now let's go ahead and let's meet with this guy over here. So we're going to go to units and in military forces we see King Felipe here. So let's meet with the king. So we have this guy. He has a command of two. He has a chivalry of one. Five in authority and three in piety. Now let's check out the retinue here. The House of Habsburg. So we have here the member of the Habsburg family. He has a bard with him. And, and actually he is located in Valladolid. So let's go ahead and see where is he located. He is located uh, right in here, over here in Valladolid. So he is slightly in the north. Orders, He's the faction leader from the House of of Spanish Habsburg, he is a German dynasty. So we're going to talk about a little bit of the traits. He's a promising commander. He's a womanizer. He is smart, and he is modest. Now let's have a look at Francisco Melo, which is the greatest general. Your orders, but here we see this man. He is a three-star general. Two chivalry, two loyalty, not so loyal. He has a piety of three. He has 51 years of age. In his retinue, he has the Spanish ducal house of Alvarez de Toledo. And he is from the princely family of Alvarez de Toledo. And he has talent for command as a trait, promising commander, and he is corrupt. Very interesting, of course. Now let's have a look at all the guys that we can see in the actual military forces we already talked about king felipe now we have prince juan jose and here we see that he is in pamplona he is the faction heir very very loyal with two stars in command not so powerful nicolas another dynasty member located in cartagena he has two stars in command and it's very loyal not so loyal Manuel de Mura, a general with two stars. Diego Lopez from Valencia, and he has two stars as well. He's loyal. And there you go. Everything that you see here, we're going to continue. I'm not going to go one by one because this is a huge faction. So you can feel free to pause and enjoy whatever we can see here. Okay, now that we have enjoyed our time with that list, we're going to see right now the actual settlements. So we have plenty of settlements. We have Madrid, Valladolid, Seville, Cordoba, Badajoz, Zaragoza, Valencia. We have Leon. We have Oviedo. All of these are yet inside Iberia, Barcelona, Cartagena, Pamplona. We got Milan, a possession in Italy, of course. We got Cagliari, a possession in Sardinia. We have Granada and we have Bruges, the most difficult area of the Spaniards in this time period, as you can see. As it shows, the public order is not so good. The thing is that the area of Cagliari and the area of Milan are going to be ceded to the Austrian Habsburgs, part of the family in this time period.
Okay, let's have a look and check the actual agents of the faction of Spain. We have Elena Menendi, a princess. Your Majesty. I'm going to select them and you're going to see exactly here on the map where are they located. Apparently, she is located in Palermo. In the community of Madrid, we have Hello, Cristina Sanchez. We have Isabella Habsburg, your the princess Majesty. in Madrid. Augusto Perez. Augusto Perez, a bishop in Madrid. We have two merchants, one in what trade. is called the new land here in what apparently is Yucatan, and another Ready merchant in which is apparently Florida. And then we have Bruno Porco, a spy do, on Madrid. Let's go back to the factions and let's continue to the next one. Now see what is the next one. The next one we have the Principality of Transylvania. Very nice picture here. We have a lot of information here that we can enjoy. And then we have the actual long campaign rule, uh, rules, which are holding 55 provinces, including Transylvania, Slovakia, Hungary, Polesia, Lower Austria, Lesser Poland, and eliminate the Turks and the Moldovians. And in short campaign rules, we have 25 provinces, including as well, again, Transylvania, Slovakia, Hungary, Polesia, Lower Austria, Lesser Poland, and eliminate the Moldovians. So this time, we are not going to be so ambitious as to eliminate the Turks. Let's go to the map and see what this faction can offer. Here we are in the map, in the area of Transylvania, in the northern Balkans. We're going to begin and we're going to go and see the faction overview over here. The capital is Cluj and we have the ruler Prince Georgi II. The greatest general is Janos Kemeni. Controlled provinces three, one is a castle and two are cities. Let's go ahead and check the family tree. We begin with Prince Georgi which is actually says here that departed peacefully, is dead. And now we have here the Prince Georgi II. He is the faction leader. Then we have Prince Ferenc, H3, which is the faction heir. Now let's go ahead and let's meet this faction leader. So this faction leader is located in the capital. Serve, he is 27 years old, has two command, is a man with four chivalry, with four authority, and five piety. Has nothing in retinue. He is the faction leader related, related to the rulers of Transylvania. And he is a aspiring commander, eager, religiously minded, and an honorable ruler. Let's remember, let's go ahead here, the actual greatest general is Janos Kemeni. Let's go ahead and see who is this guy. Janos Kemeni is right now on the screen. This guy is a man with two commands. Apparently has dread, but there's no dread. Five loyalty, very loyal, and three in piety. He is, as it says here, the heir apparent. Talent for command, promising commander. So now let's go ahead and see the military forces over here. We begin again with the faction leader, which we already saw. Sigmund Rakowski, the dynasty member of the Transylvania. Here we see him. We have Michali Apafi. We have Emerki Tekieli and Colonel Pavel. Not so good, not, not too many generals. But that's what we got. In terms of settlements, we have Cluj. Let's have a look at Cluj. We have this one that um, it says Brazov, I believe, and Kosish over here. In agents, we have Jakov Borbeli, yes. a spy. We have a bishop, Georgi Lipai. 
How may I serve? Amelia Hegedus as a princess. An honor, my lord. Sofia Batory. What do you require of me? And Susana Lurant. An honor, my lord. Let's go to the next one, which is going to be the Electoral Saxony. Over here we have the campaign rules for the short campaign, which is holding 25 provinces, including Saxony, the March of Lusatia, Mordovia, which is Moldavia, Hesse, Brandenburg, and eliminate the electorate of Brandenburg, Prussia, or Prussia. So for the long campaign rules, we have 55 provinces, including Saxony, Lusatia, Mordovia, Hesse, Brandenburg, and this time as well eliminate the Prussians. Let's go ahead and check these guys out on the map. So straight ahead we go and click here the faction overview. We can see that the ruler is the Elector Johann Georg, Greatest General Elector Johann Georg. We have here five generals, two controlled provinces. The two provinces that we control with Saxony are cities. Now let's go ahead and see the actual family tree in which we see the Elector Johann George, 63 years old. And down here we see Prince Johann George II. Let's go ahead and figure out what is going on with this guy. So, Saxon leader. Saxon leader. As we said before, Elector Johann George with two stars in command. Apparently, he should have dread, but he does not have anything at all. He has a 4 authority and 3 in piety. In his retinue, we find no one. Traits. From the house of Vettin. He is an aspiring commander, energetic and the skilled bureaucrat. Because this faction does not have a lot of units or military forces we're going to go and check them over here prince johann george which is the heir to the throne now let's not forget that this guy is 63 years old ah, come on. figuring out figuring out this guy prince johann george ii with two on command nothing on dread and eight in loyalty we can be sure that this guy is not going to rebel three in piety and as retinue, he has heir to the throne. This thing is the person that is the heir to the throne. So you can see that it's holding this as a retinue. He is the heir apparent from the House of Vetting, promising commander, and sadly social drinker. August Vetting, we have here. The next three generals are part of the faction that have two stars all and are very loyal. These are the guys that you can see here. Now. Coming on here, we go to settlements, and you have two settlements, as we mentioned before. These two settlements are Dresden, are Dresden over here. Let's just click this as always. And then we have Leipzig over here. In agents, we are going to see here that we have two princesses, one bishop and a spy. Now let's go ahead to the Moldavians. The Moldavians over here we have at 25 provinces including Moldova, Wallachia, Sabruzie, Transylvania and eliminate the Principality of Transylvania. For a long campaign we have 55 provinces as well again including Moldova, Wallachia, Zaprosia, Deniper territory, Transylvania and eliminate the Transylvanians including the Cossacks Hetmanate. Now, let's see the region of Moldavia with this area over here. We can see directly the area of Bucharest and we're going to begin with a faction overview in which the capital is Bucharest. The ruler is Hospodar Basili and the greatest general Hospodar Basili. Eight generals, two controlled provinces. The two provinces are cities. Let's go ahead and check the characters here. We have Hospodar Basili of... 53 years old and his heir Hospodar Stefan of 17 years. Let's go ahead and check the guy that is of our interest. Hospodar Basili is a guy with five star uh, sorry with three stars in command, two dread, four in authority and four in piety. 
Sadly, he does not have anything in retinue. He is from the Lupu family, proven commander, religiously proper, cruel and cunning, and he's healthy, by the way. Now, if we see over here, because we already know that the greatest general is as well Hospodar Basili, we're going to check Hospodar Stefan. Yes. We already know that this guy is the heir. He has just three rings in loyalty. That's everything that he has. And he has four rings in piety. He's from the Lupul family, again, religiously proper and healthy. Now let's go ahead and check out what we got here in the generals. Nothing of note up to this point, but apparently all of these guys have dread. And basically most of them have three. So that's something to take into account. Let's go ahead and see the areas that we control, which are two. Bucharest, which is the capital, and Yasi in the north. For agents, we have one princess, actually three princesses. To be honest, three princesses, because this was a little bit interesting to see this, the only thing that we have. So we can start spreading Moldovian blood all over the map. Well, well, we are going to continue here with the Bavarian electorate or the electorate of Bavaria. For short campaign rules, we have 25 provinces, including Bavaria, Trondelag, Franconia, Suabia, Alsace, and eliminate the faction of Prussia. If we go for a long campaign, we would have to take 55 provinces, including Bavaria, Trondelag, Franconia, Suabia, Alsace, and again, eliminate the Prussians. Now here we are in a beautiful Munich, so let's go ahead and see what we got here. A ruler, Elector Maximilian, and the greatest general, the Elector Maximilian himself. We have four generals, two controlled provinces, the two provinces are cities. On the family tree, we have Electro Maximilian and we have his son, Prince Ferdinand, 18 years old. Let's go ahead and check this guy that is the faction Great leader Kaiser. and, as well, the greatest general. Two stars in command, nothing in dread and four in authority with three rings in piety. Nothing in retinue and he is from the Wittelsbach family and an aspiring commander. As his here we have a guy with two stars, two chivalry, eight loyalty and three piety. Heir apparent from the Wittelsbach, again, noble in battle and aspiring commander. We have another two guys that are loyal as well and have a little bit of chivalry, but not too good in the terms of battle. For settlements, we're going to see Munich and we're going to see Nuremberg. In agents, we have a spy, a bishop, and a princess. Let's follow along the first line over here, and we go here to the Duchy of Savoy Piedmont with 25 provinces, including Piedmont, Helvetia, and the elimination of the Venetians. For a long campaign, we have 55 Piedmont, Helvetia, eliminate the Venetian Republic. And the Republic of Genoa and the Grand, Grand Duchy of Tuscany. So we are here in Turin. The ruler is Prince Carlo and the greatest general Francesco di Savoia. We have three generals, one controlled provinces and eventually that is Turin as we can see here. So we have the deceased departed Prince Vittorio and the actual faction leader Prince Carlo and his brother Fa Prince Luigi. Let's go ahead and see what this, this guy has for us. He has a two stars, nothing in dread, and an authority of five. He has three in piety. To note, right now this is the guy up to this point that has been showing the best authority of all the guys that we have checked. We have this guy as the family 
the ruling family of Venice and the sparring commander political animals killed bureaucrats severe and good with infantry. Prince Luigi, on the other hand, yes? is not so loyal and not so good in command. He has two stars and three in piety. Up to this point we can see that that's the norm. And then we have from the ruling family a spring commander, political animal, skilled bureaucrat. And sorry for that because Orders. it's just yes. bugged out. Severe and good with infantry. We have Francesco di Savoia, which is the greatest general. Your Francesco win. di Savoia showing off his four stars and basically six in loyalty with three in piety. He is as well from the ruling family promise commander, born to command political promise and bold attacker. The other guy that we have is an admiral. Settlements are Turin and we have in agents two princesses, one bishop, one diplomat and one spy. Now we go to the Kingdom of Sweden. For the short campaign with the Kingdom of Sweden, we have to hold 40 provinces. Svealand, Södermanland, Svaland, Gotland, Dalarna, and eliminate the faction of Denmark and Norway. Let's go ahead and figure out what we got in the faction in the starting position. Sweden for a long campaign has a little bit of difficulty. 60 provinces, including Svealand, Södermanland, Livonia, Estonia, Pomerania, Gdansk, Greater Poland, Lithuania, and the Kingdom of Denmark uh, as a faction to be eliminated, plus the Polish Krewo Union. So let's figure out what we got here in Stockholm. Stockholm is obviously the capital. We have the ruler as Queen Christine. And the greatest general is Prince Carl Gustav. 18 generals, a very huge faction, the eclipsed Swedish faction. Control provinces 17, 15 cities and 2 castles. Let's go ahead and see the family tree of Queen Catherine. Carl, which is departed, he is two lines back. And then we have Gustav. And finally we get over here Prince Karl Gustav and Christine. So let's go ahead and figure out what is going on here. Christine. Yeah. Now it's a little bit interesting to see that Christine, even though she is a she, she is a general. She has two stars in command, nothing in dread, two authority and three in piety, nothing in retinue. A faction leader from the House of the Vasa, aspiring commander, attractive, natural negotiator, diplomatic ability, educated, tolerant, and sterile. Let's go ahead and see Prince Carl Gustav. If we remember, because I don't, up, up to this point, Prince Carl Gustav is the actual greatest general. So let's go ahead and see what oh, he has nice. to offer. He is as well the heir to the throne from the Wittelsbach family. And this guy is pretty remarkable. Six stars in command, a 26 year old, two chivalry, eight in loyalty and three in piety. He is noble in battle, great commander, natural commander, logistics expert, skilled with infantry, good artillerist, infamous victor and tactician. For the lists here we have several commanders here, Jacob de la Guardia is one of the most interesting ones with five stars and apparently Arvid Wittenberg is going to be another one and I think that's everything that we can see up to this point, feel free to pause and check this list. On settlements, we have a lot. Stockholm as the capital, we have here this other place, Norrköping, Falun, Kalmar, Gothenburg, Havana, Turku, Riga, in, in the mainland, Sessin, 
Tallinn. Bremen with a little bit of problems. Ullaborg. Viborg. Ljubljana. Umea. Vasa. And San Michel. In agents we have two princesses, one bishop, two diplomats and a spy. Now we're leaving Sweden and to be honest, this is the first mod that I can see that a female is actually represented as a general here. Queen Christina the first Alexandra Vasa surprised me with that fact so let's go ahead and continue here. the cossack hetmanate with the cossack hetmanate we have 25 provinces including saprosia deniper saviers right bank of ukraine poversia podolia and retruthenia and the function we have to eliminate is the crow union going around for the long campaign rules we have saprosia deniper saviers Right Bank of Ukraine, Pobrezia, Podolia, Retrutenia, Black Rutrenia, Moldovia, and Eliminate the Crimean Canate, and wow, Polish Lithuania and Moldovia as enemies. Let's go ahead and see that. We're now in Saprosia. Now let's go ahead and see the capital Saprosia Sich. The ruler is Saprosian Hetman Bogdan Kmieleniki. If I pronounce it that good, and the greatest general is again the Hetman Bukton Kmielniki. The generals that we have here are nine control provinces, two, one city, and one castle. Let's go ahead and see straight ahead the family tree with Hetman Bogdan as the family leader. Down here we have Atamant Timofiev Kmielinki. Now let's go ahead and check the lists. Wow, I'm impressed. So we got here the Hetman Bogdan, full command of 10 stars, 2 dread, an authority of 4, and a piety of 4. Incredible and remarkable character. Traits proven commander, religiously proper, cruel and cunning, healthy, loathes poles. Masterful marksman, infantry master, born to command, political wise, inspirational speaker, strategically sound, tactically sound, strong attacker, drill master, renowned victor, and the only thing that that is left here to be on his trait is to be perhaps Alexander the Great. So now we are going to go here to the Atamantimu Fiv Kmieliniki, which is the actual heir. Sadly, for the Saprosians, this guy is crap. So we have a command of one, two, dread. Good thing is that he has seven in loyalty. Nothing that to be preoccupied of, because it's not a big deal, being almost the most powerful character in the mod. And then we have three in piety he is a promising commander religiously proper Ready. Ready. cruel and cunning healthy loads the pole skilled marksman and good with infantry of course we have the next list of generals here and to be honest i think this thing is soundly overpowered Stanislav Michal Kreskovsky. Look at this guy. Full command. Then we have this other one. Full command. Maxim Krivio Krivonos. Well, well, well. Interesting faction. Martin Nebaba. Four command. We have five command with Pavel Tetera. And that's the list we can continue here and we see well then starts with some crappy crappy generals there but wow it's interesting okay let's go here and see the saprosia as the actual capital and poltava 
as the other settlement. For agents, we have three princesses, one diplomat, th one, two, three, four, five, six spies. Very, very overpowered faction. A lot of surprises for us in this mod. Let's go ahead and continue. Over here we have the Duchy of Brunswick. With the Duchy of Brunswick, we have to hold 25 provinces, including Eastphalia, Lower Saxony, the Hanseatic League, Friesland, Brandenburg, and eliminate the Prussians. If we want a little bit more of time during this mod, with 55 provinces, including Isfalia, Lower Saxony, Hanseatic League, Friesland, Brandenburg, and eliminating again the Brandenburg Prussians, is going to be enough. Now here we are in Brunswick, let's go ahead and see the ruler, Prince August, and the greatest general, Prince August himself. Four generals, three controlled provinces, one castle, and two cities. Going straight in here, we can see Prince August over here and his heir, Prince Rudolf August, down here. Let's go ahead and check him out on lists. We can see Prince August. Prince August is a man of 49 years old with three command, nothing in dread, three authority and three piety. He's the faction leader from the House of Wealth, promising commander, talent for command, promising attacker, political animal and smart. He is as well the greatest general. Over here we can see the faction heir, which has one command, eight in loyalty, and three in piety, 21 years old. He's the heir apparent from the House of Wealth again, promising commander and agitator. We have these two guys over here, which are nothing remarkable. Over settlements, we have three settlements, Brunswick, Hamburg, again. Over here we have the settlements Brunswick, Hamburg, and Hanover. On agents we have a spy, a bishop, and two princesses. Continuing here we go to the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. For the short campaign, 25 provinces including Tuscany, Pisa, and eliminating the Genoese. For the long campaign, holding 55 provinces, Tuscany, Pisa, eliminate the Venetians and the Republic of Genoa, including the Duchy of Savoy, Piedmont. Now, welcome to the Apennines here in the Italian peninsula. We're going to go and see the capital, Florence, ruler Prince Ferdinando and the greatest general, Crown Duke Odoardo. Three generals control provinces, two, one city and one castle. For the family tree, we have the deceased Prince Cosimo II and the actual Crown Duke Odoardo, which is the greatest general. The ruler, which is the Prince Fernando, or Prince Ferdinando, is the actual ruler and the heir, as you can see, as I mentioned before, is the most powerful general. Let's go ahead and see what we got with this guy, with these guys. Prince Ferdinando, Orders. we have a... 38 years old, 2 in command, 4 in authority, and 5 in piety. He's the faction leader from the ruling family of the Medici, promising commander, talent for command, religiously minded, and good at math. Yes? For the crown, Duke Odoardo, which is the most powerful general, he is a 3 command, nothing in dread, 8 in loyalty. And six in piety. He is the heir apparent, again a Medici, strategically sound, talent for command, and religiously devout. We have Cosimo the third, the Medici, which is a three star commander, and Admiral Alberto, which is something nothing of note. Checking out the cities, Firenze and Livorno over here, and in agents we got two princesses, a priest, a bishop, a diplomat, and a spy.
Continuing in the Italian Peninsula, let's go to the Venetian Republic with a short campaign of 25 provinces including Veneto, Istria, Dalmatia, Peloponnese, Nordland, Voronezh, Oblast, Epirus, Lukovitsky district and eliminate the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. If you want a little bit more of time and you want a long campaign, you will have to hold 55 provinces including Veneto, Istria, Dalmatia, Peloponnese, Nordland. Voronezh Oblast Epirus, Ludovitsky Macedonia, and eliminate the Kingdom of Na Naples, the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, and the Duchy of Savoy Piedmont, basically to form Italy. Now, here in Venetia or Venice, we're going to see what this faction has to bring. So, we got the capital Venice, ruler Dos Francesco, the greatest general, Cancellor Bertuccio, General 7, control provinces 3, 1 city and 2 castles. So, we got here Dos Franc Francesco and his brother, which is going to be the Cancellor Bertuccio, as the actual heir. Let's go ahead and figure out what they can bring to us. Dodge Francesco as the ruler Your will. is going to bring to us a 63 year old with one command, nothing in dread, four authority and three in piety. Nothing on the retinue, he is the faction leader, talent for command, promising defender, perfect politician, at least skilled bureaucrat and severe. Now, the greatest general, which is the faction over here, we have Cancellor Pertuccio. He has three in command, nothing in dread, seven in loyalty and three in piety. 52 years old, born to command, promising attacker and eager. Let's have a look at the lists here of the military forces. Feel free to pause wherever you find something interesting. Going into settlements, we have the capital Venetia, Dubrovnik, and Sadar. On agents, we find ourselves with four princesses, one bishop, a diplomat, and two spies. Continuing in the Italian peninsula, we're going to check now the Kingdom of Naples. On the campaign rules with a short campaign, we have to hold 25 provinces, including Lazio, Emilia Romagna, Ancona, the Holy Land, and eliminate the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. For long campaign rules, we have to hold 55 provinces, including Lazio, Emilia Romana, Ancona, the Holy Land, and eliminate Venetia, the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, and the Duchy of Savoy. It's pretty much the same as Venice, but the inverse. Now let's go ahead and check the Kingdom of Naples in southern Italy. So the capital is Naples, the ruler is King Francesco, and the greatest general is Prince Vittorio. Six generals, three controlled provinces, two cities, and one castle. If we check the family tree, we can see that King Francesco is the faction leader and his brother, Prince Vittorio, which is actually the greatest general, is his heir. Let's go ahead and check King, King Francesco. King Francesco has finally something in his retinue. I said finally because we have been checking all these guys and this is one guy that has something on the retinue. He has an apothecary. He is... 44 years old, a governor of one command, nothing in dread, four in authority and three in piety. The traits of this guy are faction leader, talent for command, promising defender, perfect politician, skilled bureaucrat and severe. Now, if we want to check the heir to the faction, which is the actual faction, greatest general, sorry, Orders. we're going to see Prince Vittorio, four years old and he has three command seven in loyalty and three in piety in retinue we have a drill master and 
this token that is the heir to the throne. Born to command as his trait, and again promising attacker and eager for his traits. Over here we can see the lists of generals, so feel free to pause and check them out. On settlements we have the capital which is Naples, Taranto and Messina. Basically Messina is comprising all the island of Sicily and Taranto is comprising the part that is South Naples. On agents we have two princesses, one bishop, one diplomat and two spies. Now let's go ahead and continue on with the nations that are present on the Italian peninsula. This time we're going to go to the Republic of Genoa. If you want a short campaign with Genoa, you would have to hold 25 provinces, including Liguria, Corsica, the Peloponnese, Voronese, Lukovici, and eliminate the Duchy of Savoy Piedmont. If you want something long, you would have to hold 55 provinces, including Liguria, Corsica, Peloponnese, Voronese, Oblast, Dukovitsky district, and eliminate the Kingdom of Naples, the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, and the Duchy of Savoy Piedmont. Up to this point, we have already noted that if we play any one of the actual factions that are present on the Italian peninsula at the end is a fight of survival in between the other ones. Let's go ahead and check this faction on the map. So here in Liguria we're going to check the faction of Genoa. The capital is Genoa, the ruler is Prince Giovanni and the greatest general is Prince Gerolamo II. Generals, we have six, and we have two control provinces. Both of them are cities. Checking out the family tree, we can see that we have here Prince Giovanni, and we have down here Prince Gerolamo II. So let's go ahead and check them out. With Prince Giovanni, we have a 54-year-old governor with two stars in command, nothing in dread, an authority of three and a piety of three. In the retinue, we have an apothecary. Over the traits, we have him as the faction leader, aspiring commander, political animal, skilled bureaucrat, severe and good with infantry. Yes? Prince Gerolam of the second is the greatest general. He is 63 years old and he has a command of four. Nothing in dread and a loyalty of seven, three in piety. For the retinue we find a drill master and the token of the heir of the throne. He is the heir apparent, promising commander, born to command, political promise and bold attacker. Now we're going to check the units, you can pause every time that you find something interesting. Over the settlements we find ourselves with Genoa and Hatzio. Over agents we have four princesses, we have one bishop, one diplomat and a spy. At this point we're going to continue and we're going to move back into the north with the Kingdom of Denmark. In a short campaign with the Kingdom of Dem Denmark we have 25 provinces including Scania, Jutland, North Jutland, Eastern Norway, the Hanseatic League and Gotland. Eliminate the faction of Sweden. If you want a long campaign, you would have to hold 55 provinces, including Scania, Jutland, North Jutland, Eastern Norway, the Hanseatic League, 
and Gotland. Apart from eliminating the Kingdom of Sweden, you would have to face the electorate of Brandenburg, Prussia. So now for Denmark, we have the capital in Copenhagen. We have the ruler, King Frederick, and the greatest general, Korfitz Ulfeldt. Seven generals, and we have six provinces under our control. Five of them are cities, and one is a castle. We can see here that the king is located over here in the family tree and his heir which is prince ulrich which is his son over here in lists we're going to check king frederick and Kurfitz ulfeld which is his more prominent general Rein kaiser Checking out King Frederick, we see that he is uh, 40 years old, with a command of 3, nothing in dread, an authority of 4 and a piety of 4, nothing in retinue. He is the faction leader from the Oldenburg dynasty, aspiring commander, talent for command, risky attacker, religiously proper, and budding bureaucrat. A command. So here we have in Alborg Korfitz Ulfeld, 42 years old. He has three in command, nothing in dread, six in loyalty and a piety of four. We find nothing on the retinues from the Oldenburg dynasty, natural commander, religiously proper, talented with numbers, smart and generous as his traits. Now let's have a look at the lists of the military forces. Now checking out the settlements, we have the capital, Copenhagen, we have Olborg, Aarhus, Trondheim, Narvik and Oslo. Over agents, we find three princesses, one bishop, and a spy. Now let's move to an interesting faction here, which is Brandenburg Prussia. Basically, in a short campaign, you would have to hold 25 provinces, being them Brandenburg, Rear Pomerania, the Duchy of Prussia. Western Pomerania, the Hanseatic League, Silesia, Friesland, Lower Saxony, Eastphalia, and Hesse. Eliminate the factions, eventually the electorate of Saxony. For the long campaign rules, we will have to hold 55 provinces, including Brandenburg, Rear Pomerania, Duchy of Prussia, Western Pomerania, Hanseatic League, Silesia, Friesland, Lower Saxony, Eastphalia, Hesse, and apart from eliminating the electorate of Saxony, we would have to eliminate the Duchy of Brunswick. Now, here in Berlin, let's have a look at Brandenburg, Prussia. The capital is Berlin, the ruler is the Elector Friedrich Wilhelm, the greatest general is Georg Derflinger, four generals and three controlled provinces. The three of them are cities. Here we see that the Elector of Frederick Wilhelm is a very young man and his son is the Electoral Prince Frederick, which is a baby. He is the faction heir. Over here in lists, we can check yeah. the Elector Frederick Wilhelm, which is the young 28 years old faction leader with three in command, nothing in dread, two in authority and four in piety. We find nothing in the retinue and over traits we have the faction leader from the Hohenzollern, aspiring commander, talent for command, risky attacker, religiously proper and budding bureaucrat. Come on. This George Derflinger, 28 years old, again, 
is listed as the most stable general for Prussia. He has 5 stars in command, nothing in dread, and 5 rings in loyalty, 3 in piety, nothing in retinue, and interestingly enough, 1 trait, legendary commander. Now let's go ahead and check the military forces of Brandenburg, Prussia, which are not too many. On settlements we have Berlin, we have Königsberg, and Slupsk. For agents we find ourselves with three princesses, one bishop and a spy. Let's go ahead and check the Republic of England. Now, in this mod, we're going to see this thing. We have on the British Isles a republic and an actual kingdom. These guys are very unique on any mod from Total War. Let's go ahead and check the campaign rules. And we have, in short, 25 provinces, including Caledonia, Lannister, New Land, Vologda region and eliminate Great Britain, which is the kingdom. Over here we have 55 provinces in long campaign rules, Caledonia, Lannister, Newland, Normandy, Vologda region and the Ile de France and eliminate Great Britain. So here in Birmingham, which is the actual capital, we check that the ruler is listed here as King Oliver, even though is a republic. We have the greatest general as King Oliver as well, five generals, two provinces in our control, both of them are cities. We see here King Oliver as the faction leader, and we see Prince Richard as the heir to the faction. Let's go ahead and check the faction leader, which Name is thy enemy, Lord. actually the most able general. Now, look at this guy. We have King Oliver, 49 years old, full command, and we have a dread of six, with six authority and five piety. This guy is powerful to say the least he has nothing in retinue and he is the faction leader his traits are legendary commander born conqueror genius conquering hero religiously minded merciless molar and merciless leader Go ahead and check very quickly Prince Richard. Orders? Even though Prince Richard is not as good as King Oliver, we see that he has five stars in command, nothing in dread, seven in loyalty, and a piety of three. He is the heir apparent, proven commander, and natural commander. Over here we can see Henry Cromwell as a dynasty member with three stars, four stars for Roland Lagarde and Henry Ireton with three stars. Over settlements we have Birmingham as the capital and Bristol over here. In agents we simply have two princesses. Now, we could be tempted to go straight to Great Britain because it's the same faction but it's fractured, but we're going to follow the order that we see on the actual faction screen. So let's go ahead and let's check the next one, which is the United Provinces. With the United Provinces of the Netherlands, we have in a short campaign to hold 25 provinces including North Holland, South Holland, Ingria, Flanders, Vologda region and the Gold Coast. Let's 
Now we locate ourselves in Amsterdam, which is the actual capital. The ruler is King Wilhelm and the greatest general is King Wilhelm. We have eight generals and three controlled provinces, three are cities. Over here we see that King Wilhelm is the actual leader and his son, which is a baby, Prince Wilhelm III, is his heir. Over here in lists we can see the faction leader King Wilhelm of 22 years old, a governor with a command of two, nothing in dread, foreign authority, for impiety. We see that there's nothing on the retinue. Faction leader and his traits are the following. From the ruling family of House Orange Nazo, aspiring commander, promising defender, religiously proper and a skilled bureaucrat. Now we're going to see the lists here on the military forces on what we can find with the United Provinces of Netherlands. Following here we see the settlements, the settlements are three, we have Amsterdam, Rotterdam and Fort Elmina. Now this fort, I have to make an emphasis here because this is perhaps the first time that you're going to see Fort Elmina in Southern Africa. So Fort Elmina is a colonial settlement and you can find it in Potop. Now returning again to our capital in Europe, we're going to follow along with the agents. We have three princesses, one spy and a merchant. Now let's go ahead and let's visit the Crimean Khanate. For the Crimean Khanate we have 25 provinces including Crimea, Podolia, Red Ruthenia, right bank of Ukraine, the Dnieper territory and eliminate the Cossacks. For a long campaign we have 55 provinces, Crimea, Podolia, Red Ruthenia, right bank of Ukraine, Dnieper territory, Sloboda U Ukraine, and eliminate the Cossacks and Moldova. Now let's check out here in Bakizarai in Crimea what we got with this Khanate. We have the ruler as Khan Islam III and the greatest general Adil Jirej. Nine generals, two provinces, one is a city and one is a castle. So we got here Khan Islam the third and his heir which is Khan Mehmed the fourth. Let's remember that the greatest general is not the faction heir, is actual Adil Jiresh. Let's find out. King Islam the third is this guy of 44 years old. He has four stars in command and he got eight dread, two authority and three piety. He has nothing on retinue and his traits, apart from being the faction leader as are the following aspiring commander, brutal conqueror, sacker, great cavalry commander, harsh justice, merciless molar, cruel leader, disrespectful prisoners, an eastern warlord. Now let's go ahead and see, apart from Khan Mehmed IV, we're going to check the greatest general, that it's located over here. Now, not to be confused by this one here, this one here has the same name as the greatest commander. So, the greatest commander is a 31 year old. He is a dynasty member with a command of 8 and a dread of 8. 5 rings in loyalty and 3 in piety. This man has no retinue and his traits are the following. 
Proven Commander, Brutal Conqueror, Sacker, Great Cavalry Commander, Harsh Justice, Merciless Molar, Cruel Leader, Disrespects Prisoners and Eastern Warlord. You can check out the list of generals over here. Now we're going to go to settlements. There's not too many. We have the capital over here and we have Asev. On agents we find ourselves with three princesses, two diplomats and two spies. Now we're going to follow the next one on the list which is the Turkish Empire. Now because I already feel that this is going to be a huge nation. And because of that, we already see that in a short campaign we will have to hold 70 provinces, nothing less. Rumelia, Serbia, Slavonia, Istria, Dalmatia, Hungary, Polizia, and then eliminate the Papal States and Transylvania. If you want more you can hold 90 provinces, including Serbia, Slavonia, Istria, Hungary, Polizia, Transylvania, Slovakia, and elimin eliminate the Papal States, the Holy Roman Empire, and the Principality of Transylvania. Now, welcome to Constantinople. Here we have the Turks, capital Constantinople, the ruler, Sultan Ibrahim I, greatest general, Umar Osman. Now this is where the things get a little bit nasty. 37 generals, 36 controlled provinces, 23 are cities, and 13 are castles. Let's go ahead and check uh, the family tree, which is a vast one. We have here... Sultan Ibrahim I as the faction leader and we can see that his son over here Crown Prince Mehmed IV which is a young 18 year old. Now let's go ahead and check the list here. Eventually the list is going to be amazingly huge but we're going to check the most important ones. Let's go ahead and check the faction leader Sultan Ibrahim the first. What is the Sultan's will? So we have here a 33 year old governor of two stars in command, nothing in dread, four authority and four in piety. We get nothing on the retinue. He's the faction leader. So let's go ahead and check the trades. From the ruling family of the Orange Nazao. <coughs> Clearly a big mistake here. So we know that this guy is an Osmanoglu, so we're going to ignore that. Aspiring commander, promising defender, religiously proper and skilled bureaucrat. Now we're going to go and find ourselves with the most powerful commander here we're going to find him over here there we go so here we have Umar Usman Umar no, Usman 22 years old this is listed as the greatest general he has four command empty dread empty loyalty and three piety we got nothing in retinue with him and he is aspiring commander and intelligent. Those are his traits. Now let's go ahead and check the actual list of commanders.
Now we're going to go and check the settlements. So let me go zoom in and let's have fun here. The capital city of Constantinople, Istanbul. We have Izmir, Adrianople, Larisa. We have Aleppo here, Bursa, Konya. We continue with Cappadocia, Belgrado, Sarajevo, Skopje, Lepanto, Ankara, Adana, Thessaloniki, Sofia, Amida, Damascus, Baghdad, Mosul, Trebizond, Tunis, Jerusalem, Buda, Jerevan, Corinth, Gaza, Tripoli, Cairo, Alexandria, Benghazi, Medina, Ackerman, Varna, Algiers, and finally Sinope. For the agents, we got three princesses, one mullah, a diplomat and a spy. We're going to go to the major powers right now, with we actually just saw one of the greatest powers, which is the Turks here. But we're going to begin from this point on with the greatest powers apart from the Kingdom of Portugal and the Electorate of the Palatinate and as well the Sultanate of Morocco, the next list, the next countries on the list are pretty much powerful countries. Let's go ahead and check the Kingdom of France. Hold 45 provinces in a short campaign, including the actual capital, which is the Ile de France, Normandy, Brittany, Siberia, Anjou, Champagne, Flanders, Lorraine, Alsace, and eliminate Great Britain. Of course, if you want a long campaign, you would have to hold 70 provinces, including the Ile de France, Normandy, Brittany, Siberia, Anjou, Champagne, Flanders, Lorraine, Alsace, and eliminate, apart from Great Britain, the Kingdom of Spain. Now, let's go ahead and check the capital starting position of France, Paris. So we go and we see that the ruler is King Louis the Fourteenth. We see that the greatest general is Prince Philippe. 17 generals, 13 controlled provinces, 10 cities, 3 castles. Let's go ahead and check the family tree of King Louis the 14th. King Louis the 14th, faction leader, is located over here, and here we have his brother, Prince Philippe. He is, as well, apart from being the faction leader, the strongest general. Let's go ahead and check those guys. Ready and able. The Roi du Soleil, King Louis the 14th, 17 years old. He has in this mod four stars in command, four in chivalry, five in authority, and four in piety. Nothing in retinue. He is the faction leader from the Bourbon, and his traits are the following aspiring commander, intelligent severe, religiously proper, fair fighter, and chivalrous ruler. Let's go ahead and check Prince Philip. Where shall we strike? Prince Philip, as well a young man, five stars in command. You're going to include with this guy three schools in dread and eight rings in loyalty. He has a piety of three. His retinue, of course, is that he is the heir to the throne from the Bourbon dynasty, burned to command as a trait, intelligent, eager, 
merciless leader as well as traits. Let's go ahead and check here in the military forces what we can see as the actual commanders or generals for this country. We have Jules Mazarin. The majority of them are Bourbon. We have a Savoyard there. And that's it. So let's go ahead and check what we got here apart from Paris. We have Rouen, we have Lyon, Marseille, we have Nantes, Toulouse, we have Reims, we have Angers, Bordeaux, Metz, Dijon, Brest, Clermont, and that's it. If we want to find ourselves in the region here of in the section of the agents, we're going to find ourselves with three princesses, one bishop, four merchants, and one spy. The next great power we have is the Habsburg Empire. For a short campaign with the Habsburgs, we have 35 provinces, including Lower Austria, Tyrol, Bohemia, Moravia, Silesia, Slavonia, Hungary, and eliminate Transylvania. 55 provinces if we want a long campaign, including Lower Austria, Styria, Tyrol, Salzburg, Bohemia, Moravia, Silesia, Kelewalia, province of Slavonia, Hungary, and eliminate the Turks and again the Principality of Transylvania. So here we are with the Habsburgs. Let's go ahead and check this out. We have the capital Vienna. The ruler is the Emperor Ferdinand III. The greatest general is Melchior von Hatzfeld. Nine generals, eight provinces being controlled by this faction five cities, three castles. Over here we see that the previous emperor was Emperor Ferdinand II and now we are Ferdinand III. Our, our faction heir is Prince Ferdinand IV. Over here we have Leopold Wilhelm Habsburg. Let's go ahead and check Emperor Ferdinand III as the faction leader. So here in Vienna we have Ferdinand III, 40 years old, 2 command, 4 chivalry, 5 authority and 4 piety. Nothing in retinue, faction leader from the Austrian Habsburg dynasty, aspiring commander, religiously proper and champion of honor. For the greatest general we're going to find Melchior. Yeah. So this guy is less listed as the greatest general Melchior von Hatz Hatzfeld. He is a general with two stars in command, nothing in dread, five in loyalty and four in piety, nothing in the retinue, 55 years old, his traits are natural commander, eager and religiously proper. Nothing of note. Let's go ahead and check here what we got in the military forces. Of our settlements here we begin with Vienna, we go to Graz, Innsbruck, Wroclaw, Prague, Brno, Zagreb and Bern. In agents we have two princesses, one bishop and a spy. And now we go to the faction Great Britain. With Great Britain we have short campaign of 45 provinces including Greater London, Norfolk, Mercia, Yorkshire, Cumbria, Comey and eliminate the Republic of England. If we want a long campaign, we would have to hold 60 provinces, including 
Greater London, Newfold, Cornwall, Mercia, Wales, Yorkshire, Cumbria, Comey, and eliminate apart from the Republic of England, the Kingdom of France. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously the capital of Great Britain is London. The ruler is King Charles I and the greatest general is King Charles I as well. 14 generals, 8 controlled provinces, 7 cities and 1 castle. Over here we can see that he is faction leader and his son, Prince Charles II, age 18 years old, is going to be the faction heir. Let's go ahead and check the lists. Yes. So, checking out King Charles I, 49 years old, 3 stars in command, 4 in dread, 7 stars, 7 gauntlets on authority, and 5 rings in piety, nothing on retinue, and his traits are from the Stuart dynasty, promising commander, intelligent conquering hero, religiously minded, cruel and cunning, and cruel leader. So we can see here the list of generals. On settlements we have London, we have Norwich, York, Liverpool, Exeter, Dublin, Edinburgh, and Iverness. In agents, we find four princesses, one bishop, three merchants, and two diplomats. Continuing here, we're going to check the following electorate of the Palatinate. For the short campaigns, we have 25 provinces, including Westphalia, Hesse, Swabia, and Franconia. And for long, 55, Westphalia, Hesse, Swabia, and Franconia. So, a small faction in between great powers. Regarding the list, we see the, the county of the Palatinate. So here we have the capital that is located in Colonia. The ruler is Prince Carl, and the greatest general is Prince Carl as well. Four generals. We control four provinces, which are cities. We can see here that Prince Carl is the actual Palatinate elector, and we see Frederick V, which was previously the actual Prince Elector. The Winter King. So let's go ahead and check the Palatinate Elector Prince Carl. Prince Carl of 31 years old has a command of 3, a dread of 4, an authority of 7, and a piety of 5. Nothing on retinue. He is from the Wittelsbach family and his traits are the following. Promising commander, intelligent, conquering hero, religiously minded, cruel and cunning, and cruel leader. We have Prince Moritz, Frederick von Hesse, and Edward Wittelsbach in the military forces. Here we see Cologne, which is the actual capital. We see Strasbourg, Stuttgart, and Frankfurt. Over agents, we find ourselves with three princesses, one bishop, one diplomat, and one spy. The next faction on the list is the Kingdom of Portugal. So we have 20, 25 provinces, including Portugal, Beira, Portugalo, Gold Coast, Feth, Marrakesh, and the Eliminated Sultanate of Morocco. In Long, we have 55 provinces, including Portugal, Beira, Portugalo, Gold Coast, Fez, Morocco, which is Marrakesh, and Eliminate again the Sultanate of Morocco. So here we have Portugal, a small faction indeed. We have the capital in Lisbon, the ruler is King Juan and the greatest general is King Juan. Generals 4, we control 3 provinces, a very small faction, the 3 provinces are cities. You can see that the King Juan is of 44, 
faction leader and Prince Alfonso is the young faction heir. Command me. King Juan of 44 years old has 4 stars in command, 1 dread, 4 stars in authority and 5 rings in piety. Nothing on retinue. The traits are from the house of Braganza, aspiring commander, religiously minded, smart and fine with blood. Now Prince Afonso, Your will. which is actually faction heir, a youngster of 19 years old, he has simply 3 stars in command, nothing in dread, 8 in loyalty and basically for in piety, he is an heir apparent of the house of Braganza as well, promising commander, religiously proper and intelligent. Here we can see the lists of generals, which are not so many, so you can see them. On settlements as well, we don't have too many, we have Lisbon, we have Porto and we have Coimbra. On the other hand, we have here in agents, a spy, a bishop and two princesses. Now we're about to get the Crevo Union here, which is, which is commonly called as the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Now, if you have reached up to this point, I would like to thank you. And now we're going to see the star of the Potop mod. This is the Union of Poland and Lithuania. This is the most important faction of this mod. It was made by Polish people and this is their faction. So we have 42 provinces if we want to do a short campaign including Red Ruthenia, Podolia, Lithuania, Samogitia, Black Ruthenia, Livonia and we have to eliminate the Crimean Khanate and the Cossack Khanate. It would be very difficult if we remember that the guys of the Crimean Khanate are very very overpowered but we still have to see what this faction can bring perhaps we're going to get a lot of surprises so let's go ahead and check the long campaign rules which are 60 provinces including all the ones that i have mentioned including estonia and eliminate the crimean canate the cossacks and moldovia now it's pretty interesting that to eliminate the turks is not included into these provinces so the polish and lithuanian commonwealth let's go ahead and check this guys the capital city is warsaw then we have the ruler King John Casimirs and the greatest general Janus Radziwiv. 29 generals, 22 controlled provinces, 19 cities, 3 castles. You can see here that King John Casimirs has a brother, which is Prince Karol Ferdinand, which is the faction heir. Janus, instead, is the greatest general. So checking this, we're going to see what King Jean Casimir's can offer. So we have 39 years old, a command of 3, 3 of chivalry and 3 in authority. He has no piety at all. On the retinue, we see that he has two things. The dynasty of the Polish Evasa family and then he has the king of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth so it says here that this person has been crowned the king of the Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania so he is from the Vasa family promising commander good with infantry just ruler liberal leader and smart let's go ahead and check the greatest general which is Janus and indeed it shows that he is the greatest general so let's go ahead and check this general a command of eight two chivalry 
no loyalty at all, but at least he has five in piety in comparison with his own king. Now, this guy has a lot of retinues. He has the princely Ratzvif dynasty, and he has Lord of, Bir of Biryush, Dubinki, Kopil, and Sluk. Again, he has the title of Grand Lithuanian Hetman and the General Starosta of Samogitia. Over here we see that he's disloyal and it shows because that's the thing, he's disloyal from the Ratsiviv family, aspiring commander, good with cavalry, smart, mighty, le le mighty legacy, perfect politician, good to walls, lord of all of these cities that will already that will reset for the units and uh, military forces you can feel free to see what we got with this faction Of our settlements, we begin with Warsaw, we go to Krakow, Poznan, Lviv, Gdansk, Vilnius, Brest, Turun, Sieradz, Samosk, Minsk, Pinsk, Mogilev, Kamienets, Smolensk, Polotsk, Kunas, Mito, Bratslav, Sitomir, Kiev, Chernihiv, and in agents we got one princess, one bishop, a priest, another two bishops, three diplomats, and five diplomats. So we're going to continue and we're going to find right now the Sultanate of Morocco with a short campaign of 25 provinces including Marrakesh, Safi, Fes, Moretonio, Vandalia, Tunisia, Tripolitania, Cyrenaica and we'd have to eliminate the rival faction of Spain. The long campaign rules are holding 55 provinces including Marrakesh, Fes, Moretonio, Vandalia, Tunisia, Tripolitania, Cyrenaica and again eliminate the faction of Spain. So here in Mauritania we begin with the capital of Marrakesh. The ruler is the Sultan Mulash and Mulash Rashid as Zarif is the greatest general. Five generals control provinces three. The three provinces are cities. This guy Sultan Mulash is a 43 year old and his son Crown Prince Muhammad 20 years old, which is his son. Let's go ahead and check the Sultan Mulach, the faction leader. What is the Sultan's will? Now this guy is at this point the weakest one, as far as I can remember. 43 years old, 2 in command, empty dread, empty authority, 6 in piety at least. The retinue is empty and we have three traits, talent for command, religiously devote and smart. Mulash Raz Rashid, being a young of 17 years old, the command is three. So this is pretty lame as to be this the greatest general. Nothing in dread, five in loyalty and three in petty. Again, the retinue is empty. And we have an aspiring commander, eager and smart as traits. You can feel free to see all of these commanders, which are not too many. On settlements again, we have Marrakesh, Fez and Timbuktu. On agents, we have a mullah, a diplomat and a spy. Finally, we reach to the last of the list. And last of the list is the Tsardom of Russia. We begin with the short campaign, which is 45 provinces, including Muscovy, Novgorod, Dnieper, 
Right Bank of Ukraine, Saporozhi, and eliminate the Crimean Khanate and the Cossacks. For the campaign rules of the long, we have 60 provinces, including Muscovy, Peskov, Smolensk, Dnieper, Right Bank of Ukraine, Seporosi, and eliminate the Crimean Khanate, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, and the Cossack Hetmanate, including the Kingdom of Sweden. So we have a lot of work with this faction. The greatest Tsardom of Russia. So we got the capital, Moscow. The ruler is Tsar Alexei, and the greatest general is Tsar Alexei. 14 generals, 22 controlled provinces, 15 cities, 7 castles. Let's go ahead and check the amazingly big family tree. So we got here Tsar Mikhail I as a departed Tsar that was before Tsar Alexei, which is a young man, and his son, which is the faction heir, the Prince Dimitrij. Over here we see Jakov Serkaski, and we have Nikita Romanov and Vasilij Zeremintiu. Of our list, we're going to check the faction leader and greatest general. Your will shall be obeyed! Tsar Alexei. So we have here Tsar Alexei, age 19, command of 5, a dread of 2, an authority of 2, and a piety of 5. Nothing on retinue. He's the faction leader from the house of Romanov. And his traits are aspiring commander, energetic, social drinker, bloodthirsty, religiously active, strong language, poor admirator, liberal leader, iron fisted. Feel free to check all of the military forces. Of our settlements, we begin with Moscow, with Novgorod, Yaroslav, Veliki Novgorod, Peskov. We have here Pereyaslav, Ryazansky, Vitegra, Tver, Mushaisk, Kazan, Kursk, Saratov, Astrahan, Bryansk. Arkhangelsk, Urengoy, Monge, Monshegorsk, Peshora, Saransk, Great Lukovci, Voronezh, and Serkis. With agents, we have one diplomat, one bishop and a spy. So we've reached to the final faction in these factions and starting positions. I am very pleased to have been in this road for all of you and mostly to bring you a database that you can check every time that you want. If you enjoy the content, give a like, subscribe, you can comment what other mod would you like to see in factions and starting positions, feel free to do it, I will always check whatever is you would like to say and see on the channel, because the channel is from all of us. Enjoy. This was Victus, see you in the next one.